Hi everybody, this is Jamie with C4 Depot and I'm really excited today because we have a new tool that we've produced for you and I think you'll really like it a lot. It's called Easy Cloud and I'd like to share this with you today and show you how it works. One of the things that's really great about Easy Cloud is that it produces clouds very quickly and if you know how to adjust the settings you can get very very fast renders that look pretty good. And if you've ever used the volumetric cloud tool in Cinema 4D, which is this thing with your physical sky, you can work for quite a long time just to get the crummiest looking clouds you've ever seen. And so if you've ever tried to create clouds in Cinema 4D, I think you probably found it very frustrating. And there are some cloud tools out there, but the way that they're set up, you can just spend like, you know, 10 minutes just getting a single HD render out of them. And this is actually pretty fast. So let me just go over Easy Cloud really quick. This is the palette that you get when you install Easy Cloud, and we have some default clouds, cumulonimbus, large flat clouds, wispy clouds, overcast, stormy clouds. This is a flyover scene that you saw in the video. We also have a few models, a biplane here that's kind of cool. Yeah, so anyway, he's got Woody's in this plane, made this thing. It's sort of a, kind of a little bit of a replica of a Waco YMF airplane. And we've got a copy of the Hindenburg and a um, hot air balloon. It's kind of a cool model. At any rate, so enough of that stuff. But let's get into Easy Cloud. And I'm going to put uh, get Woody back down to earth here. So let's just double click on the default Easy Cloud. And let's go over some of the settings that you need to make this thing work right. First of all, let's go into our render settings. And make sure that you're using the physical renderer. And turn color mapping on. Make sure HSV model is not turned on. It's unselected. And then increase your dark multiplier to 2. Uh, then in the physical settings, this is just to make your renders go a little bit faster. I would just make your maximum shading subdivisions about 2. And then your shading error threshold about 40. And then the rest of these can be 1.8. Now, you don't have to start with those settings right away. Uh, you can just use the default ones and see if you like them. If you think it's a little slower, you can move over to these. Uh, but that's to help accelerate your render times. And then the next thing you're going to want to do is go into your project settings and make sure that your view clipping is on huge. That way, uh, you won't be frustrated by wondering where your clouds are. And they're actually in the scene, but they just don't display because you're too far away. So at any rate, this is the easy cloud interface right here. And you've got a cloud opacity function, the smoothness of turbulence, the turbulence scale, cloud color. And what I would do is click on receive shadows, but turn off self shadows. And these shadows are the ones that get cast on the ground from the, from the clouds. And this controls the flatness of the bottom of the clouds, so whether it's, you know, hemispherical or more of a kind of a cotton puff. And you've got the global cluster size. And these are all actually pretty large the way that they are. And if you want to move the whole cloud rig up, you can just do that with the axis bands. If I can find it, I don't know what happened to them. But you can just move them up and down using this thing if you want. And so if you move this up, you're not going to see any changes unless you rewind the timeline and then go back and then your change will take effect. You can also keep your timeline running. And if you want to see the randomization in something that sort of approximates real time, you can just kind of click on this until you get a random arrangement that you know, suits your fancy. Now, 
just to play with this, I want to try something a little different. I'm going to increase this to 300, and I'm going to rewind my timelines and see what I've got here. Make it look like I've got a little bit more cloud coverage. And I think I'm going to spread these around a little bit, make them a little bit wider on the bottom. And then I'm going to rewind this to see. Oh, look how big they are now. Uh, one of the things about this that you want to keep in mind is that the preview makes these clouds look really, really huge. Uh, they render quite a bit smaller and a lot thinner than that. You know, I would like to see a little bit more density in this. So what I want to do is I want to go into the, the cloud material editor and I want to click on this thing called darken opacity. There's a reason why we didn't put this in the interface, but you can see now that these things are getting a little bit more darkness. And this is actually a lot faster than the self-shadowing, which really actually kind of is a bit of a memory hog, so I don't use that. But you can increase this to like 70% if you want to get a little bit more shadowiness on the opposite side of the cloud from the sun. So let's do a little bit of uh, playing around with this again. Let's make these things like a lot bigger. Try to go, go to 300% first. Rewind. Make those things a little bit taller. Now these things are starting to like stack up like they're a little bit more like a cumulus cloud. But I can see that now my renders are taking just a little bit longer to, to take. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into my Power Cluster Volume Tracer. And I want to introduce you to the world step size. Now the default world step size is 750. But when you start scaling things up like I did, when you start making the global clusters bigger, you have to take into consideration that this is the thing that controls your voxel size. So let's just say you're building the Great Pyramid of Giza. You don't want to build it with sugar cubes. I mean, that, you don't need that kind of resolution. You want to use your big, ginormous blocks. And you can do that by increasing the world step size. And I'm just going to go up to 2,000 right now and rewind this thing to reset it and just see what happens. Okay, great. So that, as you can see, is really speeding up the renders quite a bit. And I like pushing this thing as far as I can until I start to see, like, artifacting in the clouds. So let's just try 5,000 and see what happens. Uh, because there you go. Now you're seeing this like artifacting. So we we know that we've pushed this thing a little bit too far. So let's back off to like 3,000. But when I first did this, I think the default was like at 150. And it took like half an hour to render one frame in HD. It kind of scared me. But when I started adjusting the world step size, I was able to get it down to like one minute of frame without really seeing any artifacting. So this is something that you're going to really want to play with. And I think I might be able to see like a little bit in there. If it's in a video, you may not pick that up. But that's your call. You know, if you want to go for a fast render, if you want more resolution, just play with the world step size. Now, one of the reasons that we didn't include that in the interface is because you can actually layer the easy cloud tools in your scene. So, for example, let's just say that you want to have another strata of clouds and they're, they have different kind of qualities. They're wispier and they're thinner. You can bring in another easy cloud tool and you can put that at a different altitude and layer it. Now, one of the things that's really important is you don't want to copy or duplicate this easy cloud from inside your scene because that's just going to confuse the espresso and some of the sliders aren't going to work at all. So if you want to add another easy cloud tool, start with a fresh one and bring it in from the content browser and start that way. That way Cinema 4D will keep that Espresso separate. And the other thing that you need to keep in mind is that only one of these pyro cluster volume tracers will control the entire scene. As you bring more easy cloud tools in, you're going to be bringing more of these volume traces in, but they're not going to really be affecting the scene. So you need to be cognizant that it's probably the oldest one that's going to be the one that uh, is affecting your scene, and the other ones aren't going to do anything. So that's just one of the things that uh, I want you to keep in mind when you're fiddling around with your scene. And that is pretty much it. You can change the coloring of your clouds. You can actually, this is going to be the highlight side, you know, the more specular side, and then this one will be the, the shadow side. So let's just do some, I don't know, let's try some pink clouds, orange clouds, dreamsicle clouds. That's always kind of a pretty color. So it's kind of neat. And you can actually make these things really stormy. We have a stormy preset, but you can make these clouds real ominous looking if you want. Let me try to see what happens if I make it kind of green and spooky looking. Ooh, 
Yeah, it's going to rain. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it. I hope I didn't forget anything. Just remember, increase your world step size if you scale your clouds up. If you're using tiny little puffs, you can go with a smaller one. And that's pretty much it. I don't know what else there is to say, except that I hope you enjoy Easy Cloud. Uh, we've tried to throw a lot of stuff in here to make it you know, a good value for your money. And I didn't go over this rainbow. This is kind of a cool little thing. You can throw it in there. But you got a rainbow too. And I think that's it. So have fun with EasyCloud. I hope you like the tool, and we'll catch you later. Take care. Bye-bye now.